Welcome on back to the Proving Grounds, presented and powered by Verizon. I'm Mazel, joined by Joshi and Rafa yet again after an incredible game number two from Taco Gaming. It's Taco Day. I mean, what, what, it's Taco Tuesday. Like, what, what's in apparently. those tacos? The meat is tender, apparently, Joshi. Uh, yeah. But, you know, to, to take a little bit of reprieve from the intense, hot uh, spiciness of those tacos, we're going to play a little game here. We're going to play Two Truths and a Lie. Mm. I'm going to have uh, No fancy four, name for this one? No fancy name. Two Truths <laughs> and a Lie. Because I need to get across the, uh, the, <laughs> the basics to make sure. I don't know how Yordle went, but, you know, I mean... Mm. I'm just saying, no. I'm just, mm. <laughs> we did what uh, so we, could. we got we got four play. Yeah, you guys did great. You guys did great. pat on the back. We got four players, so I'm gonna go through one player at a time. I'm gonna list off three things about these players, and then afterwards you can uh, deliberate amongst yourselves and see what you think the lie is out of the the potential truth. So but Mark's not in player. Help. First player I got <laughs> is gonna be Jesus. Tonio. <laughs> I it is going to be the first player we're talking about. So get your, get your Tomio caps ready. So Tomio started on Zenith Esports. His favorite animal is a dolphin. And his favorite musical group is Twice. I'm pretty sure that last one's true. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the last one is definitely okay. true. The last one is okay. definitely true. I believe we featured that on. Uh, yeah, I think we've talked about his, that one before. On his card, I'm yeah. pretty sure. I'm yeah, pretty that, sure it was, that was like on Kelsey uh, throwing him under the bus. Or yeah, the, the Tic Tac trivia one. Yeah. 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 Okay, wait, wait. What were the other two? His favorite animal is a dolphin, and what was the other one? And he started out started on Zenith, on Zenith East. Esports. So the thing is, is that Zenith Esports eventually became Evil Genius's prodigies. Um, but before Zenith. But before that roster had Tomio, technically Rose Thorn was playing on Zenith Esports for some time during the summer. So I don't remember at <laughs> you what You might be getting a little too technical, but I, I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, My, see, the thing that I'm confused on is I'm pretty sure that Tomio was one of the many, many players that said their favorite character or their favorite animal was a cat. <laughs> I don't know about that one. There were a lot of players. That, There's a uh, lot that of got, players that said cat. That got that got cats. And dogs were like surprisingly second. Uh, a yeah. lot of you know, no lions. Unfortunately, I was a little bit sad. It was about that. it was very so, like straightforward animals. But I I feel like I feel like he did start on Zenith Esports. Uh, hmm. I I will that, go ahead and uh, go ahead and help you guys out a little bit. So okay, okay. you were correct on the twice being his uh, his favorite musical group. At least that's what we have on the survey. Uh, he did start on Zenith Esports. His yes! favorite animal is not a dolphin. It's a panda. Oh, oh, okay. Ah. It's well, it's not a cat, a cat either. It's not a panda <laughs> part, he was one of the first. Like in my original interview with him, like his first interview, I believe he told me at least on broadcast, I asked him what his favorite animal was, and it was a panda. I checked up with him this year in Academy. It still is a panda. Uh, he okay, did, okay. I believe, have a conversation about cats uh, afterwards, but but I think panda was still there. So I'm gonna take it when I can. Uh, where true, I can true, true. Uh, I like next it, I like player, it. what? Yes, do you have anything? A imagine if Volibear had a panda skin. How that would be like a huge Honestly, buff why to doesn't Tomio. It? Why yeah. doesn't he? Hey, right. <laughs> anyway. Uh, uh, so we have Cozy, my man, in the top lane. My so man. he started on in competitive on XT Esports. Uh, lovely, lovely close <laughs> friend of ours. XT Esports. So he also only plays for Taco Gaming, as you see today. And he's also known for his Akali top. Well, the, the last one's one is a lie. Absolutely second one's true. <laughs> second one's a lie. Second one's a lie. No, it's so quick, so quick, so ruthless. Yeah. Uh, it is a lie. You're gonna sniff it right out. He right, does the other play team, Mark? for St. Louis University. Oh, oh I, I, okay, took, okay, I, took, okay. I stole your thunder. I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. But we can come That's back okay. to that one uh, yeah. potentially. <laughs> I was pretty sure. Shout out, shout out to XT and all the different rosters I'm that victorious. he's helped out over the years. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, yeah, uh, so that that's a little bit on Cozy, a little bit short and sweet. So next one I got is Surdy. Uh, so Surdy himself uh, having that pop off game one, needing to come back into game three. Mm -hmm. He himself competed in snowboarding. Uh, he's also Australian. That one's true. <laughs> and he plays <laughs> no way. And he plays the clarinet and piano. So the three have again. No I'm gonna reiterate. Idea. He competed in <laughs> snowboarding. Which is funny because the next one is he's Australian, which, you know, hard to put those two together. And then he also plays the clarinet and piano. What do you guess? I wonder if Mizell said that as a baby. 
And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah. No. You know, he lives on the <laughs> desert. You know, they're, they're near the ocean. They don't have mountains. Oh, they don't have snowboard they resorts. Have Come on. <laughs> you can't There's snowboard. No and then secretly. In, in fact, I'm he sure. was a snowboarding world champion. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I've already ruled that Surdy is Australian. Yeah. Uh, he, he absolutely I mean, is. So now the only yeah, ones we left are that plays one. clarinet and piano and competed in snowboarding. So I'll the only clarinet, thing that yeah. I was really thinking was that, like, maybe maybe the first and third are both true and he's actually uh, a Kiwi. <laughs> oh, I know he's New from Zealand. Oost. <laughs> but I... So you think that he doesn't play the instruments? No, no, no. I, I do think. I think he... You, you do think he does it. I think he plays instruments, yeah. I feel Seems like, like a, a guy named Jet Joy has to be a snowboarder, though. <laughs> <laughs> has to be. I it's, didn't know there was a like, name association with snowboarding. When you have a you name child, that cool. I name you Jet. You are now you a snowboarder. When you have a name that Whether cool, you, you to have to live up to it. I think he's All a snowboarder. Right. I'm going to go right, with snowboard. Uh, he you, does you snowboard. Think, he doesn't right, play instruments. Well, unfortunately, you were wrong. Damn. Because... Surdy himself competed in skiing, not oh, snowboarding. No. So your original <laughs> assumption of, oh, well, maybe it's because Australia doesn't have a ski. No, he is a skier, not a snowboarder. Huh? Oh, got you there. You did get got me. You got me you Do got they me. have uh, resorts over in Australia? I, I is there... have no idea. I didn't fact check that. <laughs> That's just something I got from our producer, Kelsey. So I, I completely have faith in it. Uh, we do have our last player to get through pretty quickly. Uh, it is Doxa, uh, seemingly so, after he goes dominant on Zed. I will say, Doxa, you know, he plays for both Taco Gaming and SLU. Ha, huh, there you go, Mark. Uh, so that's one of them. He spent some time on TSM Amateur, and he has a popular saying that's attached to him, Doxa Magic, which <laughs> is uh, very much known by everybody possible uh, around around everywhere uh so which one do you think this lie is the lie i feel like i can't keep a straight face i feel so like you ran out <laughs> of fun facts about doxa on this one i feel like we said you know i don't know about you mark but i feel like we said doxa magic quite a bit throughout yeah, that last <laughs> it's known by literally everybody I don't know what you're talking about. I, no, this one was just a focus. It was a Doxa diff, baby. It's a Doxa like, that's all you gotta <laughs> say, man. The dude popping off on Zed. I know what's coming in the band table next time around for EGA. And if it's not, I'm gonna have some more questions. But <laughs> come on, man. <laughs> like, it's, it's absolutely incredible. You were talking a little bit about it. Uh, it Thankfully, those questions will not be for us. It'll be for <laughs> it the will team. Be. <laughs> it'll be. like, guys, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> so that's gonna be my two truths and a lot. Good job, guys, making it through that one. Some fun ones in there as well. But now we gotta get back to the serious state of things because. There's one game that separates one of these teams from going home and going forward in the lower bracket. And yes, it gets intense. Yes, it gets a little bit tight. But we got to talk about the difference that we saw in Taco Gaming from game one to game two and the reeling nature of EGA here, Joshi. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing was obviously Doxa popped the frick off. But the other player that had a much better game between games one and two was Tozy, right? He was Absolutely. out of game one. He basically didn't get to participate through most of it. Then in game two, he actually had a lot of threat onto Kauri in particular, who was consistently marking the AD carry and preventing him from doing much of anything during team fights. Exactly that. And uh, we'll have to see real quick how that all comes down. We don't have much more time to talk about it because Champ Select is ready. One of these teams goes home after this. Let's leave it all on the field. Take it away, fellas. Leave it all Why on the wouldn't? field. Leave it all on the rift. And also, goodbye, Mizell. But Mizell is never really gone, Josh. He is still technically here. Even though he's muted, you know. I just... still, you sound like it sounds like he's dead. <laughs> well, that's the, he'll that's... always be with us <laughs> through thick and thin. But we are noting that Evil Genius is now going to be on the blue side of the map, so things are going to change a little bit. We are already seeing the Akali getting banned after being played twice by Taco Gaming in game one and two, but the Zed is still available coming out for the side mm. of Taco Gaming. Now. Zed can't just come out in the first three rounds, I imagine. So that's why Evil Geniuses are more concerned about an Akali coming through for Taco Gaming in the first round rather than uh, uh, something like the Zed early on. And you might have time to then prep for a more appropriate 
champion into the Zed for Soligo, but they have already taken away the Kali, as you mentioned, and it's the Karma priority for Evil Geniuses. Yeah, I mean, this is what we saw Rovex pick first in game one of the series, if you can remember it that far back, and we are going to have to pay attention to how effectively Skytech actually pilots this, because it is something that was considered a lot stronger earlier in the season, and it's kind of all into the wayside as the uh, split has gone on. So, I feel like Taco Gaming have a lot of freedom to kind of go with whatever direction they choose to, and with Hecarim off the table, Trickster kind of falls back to his uh, older brother, the Hecarim. Big old horse, you know, still Haunts. in the animal department. Trickster just flexing how many uh, animals he's got in his zoo champion pool. And for Taco Gaming, the way that you want to now build around something like a Hecarim composition is you want other champions that could dive alongside the pony with that Onslaught of Shadows or champions that benefit off of the chaos and you get resets from it. Yeah, I mean, this is the first time that we're seeing uh, Link's off of Zaya, right? He was playing the Zaya in both games one and two. And now Tomio picking up the Viego, and we're kind of going back to a much earlier meta in a lot of ways from these two sides of the field. This is something that both teams are definitely playing a lot more of when the season began. And the Phelos getting picked up by Kauri, I really like because it's something that gives him a lot of freedom. He's going to be going with the Gale Force, and now he does playmaking tools in ways that Misfortune never would have. Whoa. We're back to Jinx of Felios here, Josh. How does that make you feel? Better than without all the ADCs, to be honest. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that when we were looking at 12.5B, I was definitely in the camp of like, man, please just give me different marksmen than Jinx and Ophelios every single game. Even, even the Zeri is like cool every now and then, but all I see is these two marksmen. And then we got Zaya Misfortune. I was happy. You weren't. You're were like, no, uh, get, <laughs> get me out. Go back. <laughs> Look, I'm Go just saying, metas where like Jin, Zaya, uh, and like Misfortune are all like your top 80 carries are just like, because they don't do anything, right? They just sit so <laughs> far back. They're like, they're the only 80 carries that are playable in those metas because they play from so far away that mm. nobody can ever get to them. Right, and so when we get these, we can actually see a lot of pop off AD carry play, right? Kauri has looked so good during the Jinx of Felos area meta. Lynx is a player that was kind of relying on the Zaya in games one and two to make sure that he was relevant and wasn't going to get run over by Kauri Skytech in games one and two. So this is a situation where we get to see and evaluate how strong is Lynx really, right? Because he's been super secondary to the way that Cozy and Docs have wanted to play so far. But it's despite being secondary to some of the highlight plays we have seen from the rest of the squad for Taco Gaming, Evil Genius has still noted that, hey, Lynx is keeping himself alive longer than we intend for him to be, thanks to the Feather Storm allowing him to escape so many crucial bursts of damage from Evil Geniuses. And now that he is on something that has to play a little closer to that fine line of life and death in these moments, this is a moment where Lynx has to step up, right? He's no longer the one that is out of the spotlight and it's like okay you know what docs and cozy can do all the damage i'll just clean up it might have to be Lynx that is the one that steps forward for a gale force uh, uh opportunity to to take out someone and look for his own resets yeah well we are going to be seeing uh the rest of the taco gaming go for a bit more of a standard draft in a lot of ways right they're kind of toning down the variance a little bit and as exciting as the last game was, I'm a little bit surprised that they are going to be shifting away from it because it was something where you had a lot of tools going in for Taco Gaming solo laners that made them look really, really strong. And going back to a more standard style of play, it feels like it's playing into EG's hands. Evil Geniuses still have to determine where this Karma is going to go. They've been holding on to this flex option for so long because I think Taco Gaming have been wanting to wait on and see what the support matchup will be before they lock in something securely for Rovex. And with this Tom Kench and Trindamir, then it should be the the karma for the mid lane in Saligo's hands. Surdy once again picking up the split pusher for Trindamir. But there's so many options now for Rovex. He's going up against the Catfish in the bottom lane. And something like an Enchanter that can empower the rest of the composition could be what ties this whole squad together. Yeah. Also, again, Trinamir into Nara, very tough matchup for the Nara. Like, 
it is it is playable, but it is hard. If you mess up even just a little bit, Surdy can take control of this game. But across the map, as you said, I, I'm really excited to see Rovex, who's been this mid laner for a long time and ended up switching over to the support role. Mm -hmm. He's kind of in the same spot as what we saw with Busio earlier, who a lot of people are very excited about as a potential prospect going forward. And Rovex still trying to really uh, find his footing against a lot of the better supports in both the amateur and the academy field. This is an opportunity to showcase how good his positioning can be because Soraka, despite the fact that he's got this reputation as being really easy to play, is a huge target and something that a lot of people are going to be trying to jump on top of because it is so important that you get rid of all the heals for Taco Gaming. There is only two threats, though, from Evil Geniuses that can reliably jump onto the back line from Viego and Trindamir. Now, I imagine and that Sky... Well, Tommy. Tommy you, you can make the primary engage, uh, but in terms of... <laughs> can you? So, so, hmm. so here's what mm. I'm, I'm trying to uh, reason out here, Josh, because yes, it is super scary for Soraka to be jumped in, in, in general, but she does have tools that, that makes it not as exciting for threats if it's uncoordinated, mainly yeah. that silence field. Yeah. I mean, Soraka is also particularly good into Viego because... If Viego ever tries to go for one of those resets, it is a very easy moment to just put down the silence. And as soon as Viego comes out, he's rooted, right? It is a virtually guaranteed bit of crowd control onto that Viego. It makes it really hard for him to get a couple of resets off during the course of the fight. And uh, the way that Taco Gaming is going to need to play is going to be relying on making sure that Rovex stays alive. And of course, Doxa has the tools necessary to make this game really exciting, jump around and isolate all of these threats, because if he's the one who's finding all the resets, he and Link suddenly get to take control of the fight. For Taco Gaming, they have shifted their composition quite heavily. It's no longer the two assassins in the solo lanes and then just the rest of a charging uh, death squad from Taco Gaming. You now have Doxa on a more of a mobile assassin but also more of a, a more of a pick mage here you have a lot of opportunity to make plays and make combos but evil geniuses want to stop taco gaming in their track stop that snowball from happening and once again they find themselves with the invade getting information on the jungle as well as position and advantage from the bottom side of the map as, as we see cozy has an opportunity to try and go for a ward chooses not to do so but overall i, I kind of want to go back mark again Taco Gaming have already done the big thing. They've taken a game off of an academy team as an amateur squad. That is the first step towards actually beating any of these teams. That is something that nobody can take away from them. They were the first team to do it. Now, they're also in a spot where they are one game away from knocking out evil geniuses, from knocking out one of the players that we had as our top prospects, from somebody that we have been praising this entire season as somebody that you need to be paying attention to. And if you can do that, if you can knock out evil geniuses right now, it's going to put a huge target on Taco Gaming as one of these teams that you really need to respect. We'll have to see how this pans out, Josh. You've set the stakes for both of these teams. Evil Geniuses Academy. The expectations are for them to succeed here, coming from the Academy side of things, but Taco Gaming have definitely surprised us in the way that they overcame the odds, even with a more advantageous opening from Evil Geniuses Ooh. Academy in that game, too. And it's Tomio, who is now going for a delayed invade after two camps. This will allow him to hit level three because it's still the same principle as Red Raptor's Gromp, but it's just now taking the enemy Gromp. It's, it's and this, Gromp. Will, th th this will hurt Trickster a lot in being able to hit level four. Yeah, if they don't suss it out, it's going to be a really tough spot for Trickster. And just as we were saying earlier in the first game, when Trickster was able to split the map top to bottom, it made it really difficult for Kyrie Skytech to find advantage. But this time it's Tomio who's doing just that, and they have no idea he's here. Yo, this is such a creative path. If he can find it, a flash root doesn't even need the flash root because it's Lynx just walking up for vision. Oh, silence. But the nice silence from Rovix stops Skytech from following up with the Abyssal Dive after committing the flash. In the end, it is Summoner's Traded. Back. And now Tomio going right back on in. He wants to try and challenge Trickster. And look at Saligo already moving. Skytech already moving. They want to pick up this blue buff and continue to deny camps away from Trickster. I was going to be a little bit worried if Tomio wasn't able to pick up this blue buff, if he wasn't able to continue splitting the map. But Evil Genius is across the board, taking control, moving together, and having an early game plan. They don't get the kill like they wanted, but they got everything else they could have asked for. 
even Surdy having a better time around pushing in this wave into Ko's. And the rest <laughs> of... <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Shout out Smacks. <laughs> That's the second time I've like mentioned Smacks while you're casting. I promise. Okay. It's... <laughs> I, you talk about me all the time when I'm not on screen, so it's okay. Okay, okay. It, as long you know it's it's answered back and forth, but yeah. <laughs> Tomio still looking to make things happen. Nice. Finds the root on the to Doxa. Doxa should be <gasps> fine, but the flash comes out. But Tomio comes in oh, with the flash. The, the turret okay. will answer back and forth, but it is first blood for Evil Geniuses Academy. That's interesting. I'm trying to decide if that's worth it one way or another. It's definitely a very even trade, and Trickster now has some time to equalize a lot of the play in the mid game. But uh, Doxa now. He's still going to be A-OK. -okay. He gets that first kill, he's going to be back, and he's not going to be losing hardly any experience. So it ends up being kind of back and forth. A Trickster, oh, not going to be having uh, enough confidence to actually go and try and get some of this counter jungling done because Cozy up on the top side has continued to be pushed in by certain. Evil Geniuses still... Rah. I'm just spooking Link's away. Oh, where where is the minion wave going to be? And does it... It fully crashes into the tower. Yeah, okay, it crashed. Okay. Yeah, so they're not going to be able to get a full-on phrase, but it does, you know, it is annoying if you are a Lynx, and this is why this matchup is so rough. Let's look at those crits. Bam. Oh my god, 232 damage. Just, I mean, that's yeah. on a minion with no armor, but still on the cozy when he's in mini form. It should be a majority no of that damage. Yeah. And even though you're getting, like, a bit of damage down here, like, Surdy has sustain, and you notice that Cozy actually went for the Cloth 4 in order to make sure that he doesn't just get pushed out of lane. So that is nice, but look at this. They're trying to punish Doxa. Oh, oh. hold up, hold up. He doesn't have Flash. Oh, God. Oh! Okay, they trade okay. one back <laughs> against Trickster. Nice you know, I, the, the effort the effort was made, and I, Not... I respect that. <laughs> Yeah, that's the kind of thing that uh, you actually only open for yourself because Lynx had his back stopped previously, right? That's the kind of thing that evil geniuses are doing. They recognize, hey, we got the push going. We have time to roam our entire bot lane up into the mid lane, and that's the only way that that play ever works. Now, it ends up being a one-for-one, one, but it is still an opportunity for them to try and create imbalances in this game. you got to create opportunities to actually try and find these wins and so forth. So, Ligo doing pretty well against Doxa. Yeah, and Doxa is level 6. He has access to Spirit Rush, so as soon as he sees Tomio cross that bush with the ward in it, he's like, all right, I guess I'm leaving. Yep, okay. You're fine. They're both fine here. Surdy should be fine. He has Undying Rage. Okay. Does, does he go for the all-in on a Cozy? Just forces the flash out. Surdy wants to look for the all-in. Oh, but Cozy gets enough distance, and the last wallop sends Surdy back to the fountain. Man, that stuff feels bad. That's a difference of one crit, but now Tomio trying to look for an opportunity. Abyssal Dive forcing Rovex to flash away from danger. The rest of Evil Genius is just pushing Tongo Gaming out of the jungle quadrant. This dragon is still available for the taking. Doxa is nowhere near. Doesn't have teleport. They could start this up, but it would be dangerous if Taco Gaming wanted to force it. Yeah. I, all I can think of when I see Sturdy go for that dive is uh, the meme that we've had for him for a little while is I am stability. That was the least stable option he could have gone for. He's just like, I am diving, I am gambling on how many crits I actually get in this spot. And, uh, you know, when the gambler comes through, you got to make sure that you're rolling high on that. So it is a spot where Cerny will still be strong during the upcoming minutes, but it's a situation where suddenly Cozy actually gets to play the game. You just outed Surdy like that, man. <laughs> the Twitch chat doesn't know why I said that. <laughs> it's a good thing. Okay, okay, okay. Well, he you has know, stability. That, yeah, uh, he Surdy, has a mental rock. You know that is true. He he has gone for these plays time and time again, and for the most part, it's it's really been a coin flip. Sometimes Surdy wins the one v one. Other times, it's a little it's a little short. But as you said before, Cozy, because he's the one that prevails, gets to still be somewhat in the game while Surdy is going to have this CS lead after catching this wave. I want to yeah. look forward, look towards the next objective play here for Taco Gaming, because this this is still a life and death game for both of these teams. Whoever yeah. loses is knocked out of the lower bracket. And I want to see what is next on these two teams' mind when advancing forward in this game. Ooh, oh, good my from Cozy, God. But the, the thing that has been very impressive to me about Taco Gaming is their consistency in this series for getting all the early game objectives. Now, Tomio! 
I mean, if you just find a pick onto the jungler of evil geniuses, that's one way to propel yourself forward as Taco Gaming. But Tomio with a nice flash gets himself away from danger, and the rest of Taco Gaming cannot pursue. Yeah, I really like the heads up from Tomio to go the other direction immediately after getting jumped on by a lot of spirit rushes and a lot of damage. But this is what we're looking at, right? Evil geniuses are now kind of turning things around in terms of the neutral objectives. They got the first dragon. They're going to get oh, this Herald. Oh, and what? Oh, what is happening? Oh, I... <laughs> Kauri finds himself on the wrong side of the tracks. I think he was trying to be cheeky about it and take away a blue buff he thought was for free. And that Taco Gaming weren't going to come for anytime soon. But now Kauri finds himself on enemy territory. No, wait. What? There's 0% chance. Is he actually fighting back against Trickster? You just, you just wait. You just wait. Chakras fall off. Right? Up. No, way. Up. no yeah, way! No, no way! No way! Cowrie, what? <laughs> That's amazing! <laughs> no way! He actually wins that! Trickster just like played it a little bit too aggressively. He thought he could wait for everything to fall off, but Cowrie willing to commit everything in order to get something in a situation where he shouldn't have been able to get anything. That's the resilience that you like to see from the TCL 2020 All Pro 80 carry. I got you, Cowrie. Don't you worry, buddy. <laughs> I'm just making sure that Cowrie's voice is heard even in between the games. Just chiming in and say, like, hey, this is important, guys. And I have to give a lot of props. I, I thought he was, I mean, he was totally dead to rights. He was no way getting out. But the fact that Cowrie is able to trade one for one ensures that he doesn't fall insanely far behind. And even good guy Skytech holding this freeze for his AD carry to come back. It's like, look, my king, I've got you. I got you. Come get this. Yes. Let, let us feed you up so you can become big and strong and carries later on in the game. And and it's kind of crazy. This might be the first time we were setting up this huge narrative about Doxa versus Cowrie, which of them will be able to carry a little bit harder. And this might be the first time that that is actually going to be coming true, right? Cowrie with a kill and an assist, Doxa with two kills. They're going to be really strong. And Soligo going with a Moonstone style of build. So that magic damage uh, coming out from the side of Evil Genius is actually going to be really low throughout the course of this game. There's a lot of opportunities for these two players to have fight. Whoa, Cozy forcing the all in on the Surti. Gets the Undying Rage out, but Surti knows that he doesn't have the damage to be able to fight the long battle so he uses that opportunity to get the hell on out away from that giant dinosaur gotta be scared of that and look at this everything we were saying with evil geniuses earlier on with their ability to manufacture dives trying to be matched here by taco gaming but they don't have the waves to actually push forward and it's an opportunity for evil geniuses to opportunistically drop this ripped herald mid while doxa is not able to roam towards the bottom side of the map and Interesting little scuffle there. Oh, oh no. Oh, but saligo has got the moves. He's got the blue suede shoes. Does he have the flash? Oh, Trickster pushing him away from the wall. But Saligo is buying as much time as he can. The empowered tether from the Mantra W gives him all the lifesteal back. And he's able to survive the outcome. And certainly now finding the... Oh, but Cozy still finds himself again the 1v1 champion. Okay, Cozy once again finding that 1v1, like you Whoa. said, Rocket barely missing. There is fighting all over the map, and I feel like this is definitely something that uh, Taco Gaming want to actually see. Now they're going to be setting themselves up after all these deaths, after everybody has to go for a pack, and Tomio is here first. This is a real fight between these two teams. <laughs> And there's no ultimates from Trickster or Doxa either because they expended so much to try to take out Soligo. And because Soligo, steady as a rock, was able to win, hold himself in that 1v2, gives Evil Geniuses the resource advantage to now have two dragons up on Taco Gaming. Yeah, this is the second time Trickster and Doxa found themselves in 2v1 and weren't able to close, but now Lynx has to get out as well. He's okay. He should be fine, right? He should be fine. Oh god. Okay, okay. <laughs> we, we all you know, good. We good. We safe. <laughs> you know, you never can tell with Cowrie these days. We just saw this man take out the horse in cold blood in his own base, and we thought that wasn't going to happen. At this point, I, you never know what's going to be with Cowrie. True. But we're also seeing a big reversal in terms of the objectives this game, right? The Rift Herald went over to Evil Geniuses. They got the first two dragons in a way that Taco Gaming has been able to pick up the first two dragons in both other games. And now, Taco Gaming a little bit on the back foot, and they have Cozy and Doxa. Once again, their solo laners kind of popping off. So as we start looking towards the next couple of objectives, as uh, Doxa and Cozy start taking a little bit more control of the game, we're going to have to pay a lot more attention to how it is that Taco Gaming actually goes for all of their setups. Can they draw the line in the sand? Can they create a situation where evil geniuses have to face check choke points or go through bushes? 
that's something that Evil Geniuses, it feels like they have more consistently been able to get that right. And they have all the tools available to now keep to keep protecting Kauri, with Tomio hovering more so on the bottom side of the map. Surdy has not been successful in the past two, two levels. 1v1s against Cozy, but you know what? Surdy is all about stability. He's still going to keep trekking on forward and maintaining that this turret goes down, or does not go down. I'm just watching him and just like, mm, that is one brave man right there, just walking <laughs> up to Cozy in order to get all the CS, but Doxa trying to find him before he finishes the recall. Zoxa have the intuition. Okay. Orb of Deception doesn't find Surdy, but it stalls the recall. And now Taco Gaming have an opportunity to get as... Well, they won't get every single turret blade on this tower. Can they find first brick in time? It looks like neither of the members of Evil Geniuses are in position to answer back on the other side of the map. So first brick can... Oh, Self wait, wait, I lied. Tomio and Skytech are back. They said, yeah, screw the bottom lane tower. We're going to make sure that you don't take this away. Yeah, and this is a kind of crazy, super fluid game all over the place, right? Everybody looking for an opportunity to just get damage down on the turrets. And the fact that uh, Cozy has won the last two 1v1 going up against Surdy means that the matchup that it was supposed to be really hard for the Nar, right? It's really, really tough unless the Trinmere messes up. And then you get to actually play the game because you get to get your whole breaker, you get all the resistances there and the healing that kind of comes along with that. You get the uh, Warren's Mail and the Ninja, the plated steel caps, excuse me, on the Boomer, um, <laughs> to actually get all the auto attack resistance coming through. It makes it so much more difficult for Surdy to participate. And now, because they have a lot of prior to play with up in the top lane, we can see a lot more opportunities for Cozy to move around the map, potentially threaten to pick up this Rift Herald while Evil Geniuses are still moving around. I feel like Evil Geniuses have been to both sides of the map like within the past 30 seconds. It's a world tour. From... Yeah, they are surfing across the entire Rift. I think at this point, though, Taco Gaming have enough time to get first brick. The Rift Herald will be secured, though, for Evil Geniuses Academy. And depending on how they use this, they can maybe synchronize it with the next Dragon Take and put themselves at Soul Point. Yeah, but it is going to be the first turret going down for Taco Gaming, right? There's plenty of opportunities for them to build Pryo and start looking at this upcoming Dragon in the mid lane prior that comes with as Cozy. He's just bullying Surdy now. Oh my, the hole breaker fully completed. Surdy still hasn't gotten a full item yet. Surdy is forced to use both the Flash and the Undying Rage. Cozy, if there wasn't a tower there, you know he'd be running Surdy down. But Surdy will be able to live to tell the tale. I don't know if his tower is going to be able to say the same. I think the big thing, oh, as the rocket is a little bit late. The big thing we got to pay attention to, though, is Cozy's ultimate is on such a short cooldown. It is going to be up for this upcoming dragon, whereas Surdy doesn't have any summoners now. And as the turret goes down, there's going to be more advantage going over to Taco Gaming, Mark. I'm still trying to hold back my excitement, right? I still think that Evil Geniuses at the beginning of the day were favorite going into the series. But this is a spot where not only is Taco Gaming uh, the first team to take a single game off of an academy team, but they are poised to be the first team to take a series as well. The only thing they need to do now is pay attention to the way that Evil Geniuses are setting because Evil Geniuses control mid lane, they control the brush, and they're controlling Cozy. Nice damage onto Cozy. However, it's all mitigated by Rovix's healing thanks to Soraka powers. Soraka and that powers. is cool. and going. <laughs> I didn't intend that for the be as funny as it was for you, Josh, okay. but I'm glad you took joy into that. Okay, but look at this. Taco Gaming, they're look turning around. Trickster Doxa, they've completely pincered off Tomio and Cal. Sky attack. They're forced to retreat. Devour is great. Keeps Kauri alive. He distances himself, looking for the Moonlight Vigil, but the wish from Rovex keeps everyone from Taco Gaming pretty darn healthy. And it's Saligo that is routed off in the end. The rest of Evil Geniuses have to scatter. They have to wait for cooldowns to come up. That Rift Herald did get a chance to crash into Ooh. the mid tower and open it up, but Taco Gaming now have the inside track for the Dragon. Great Gale Force coming out from Kauri, but yeah, Taco Gaming. I was looking at Evil Geniuses. They had control of the area first, but once again, it's Taco Gaming that are able to maneuver their members, right? In game one, we saw Lynx and Rovix go all the way around the Dragon Pit. This time, Trickster goes all the way through the river, comes behind the other team and actually finds the start of the fight. They trade it for a top lane turret, but they significantly reduce the threat coming out from the actual Dragon stacking. So, 
we have a big opportunity right now for Trickster to really kind of make his mark over the rest of the game. They're going to be really strong with all their ability to engage. And if they were a little bit on the same page and Cozy had jumped forward, they definitely would have had a, a much stronger opportunity to blow this fight out of the water. Thankfully for Evil Geniuses stars, they did not all go down and there are no more casualties to be suffered. The gold lead now slightly in the favor of Taco Gaming and they have prevented Soul Point from being in the hands of Evil Geniuses. They are still two dragons away from that, that power that they can have. But for Evil Geniuses, there's a lot of things that they need patching up. You know, Soligo held his own in a lot of situations. Surdy needs a lot of time to catch back up in this lane, though. Yeah. I mean, it's a thing where Soligo on this Karma, the Moonstone doesn't do a whole lot for your actual laning phase. But the rest of the game is doing okay around him, right? The gold is still very even uh, across the map. And the big thing is going to be coming from the fact that Cozy is just outplaying Surdy. I, I remember last year I did a little bit of an interview with Cozy and he was feeling really, really confident despite the fact that he wasn't necessarily considered one of these really strong prospects for uh, for the top lane. But I feel like now when you're going up against players like Surdy who are supposed to be considered better, it's so much of a confidence boost. And Doxa forced to use a Spirit Rush because unfortunately for him, Blast Cone right into the face in melee range of a Tredemir. Yes, he is not, you know, having the best of time against the Gnar, who Cozy has done such a damn good job of winning the 1v1s against. But Surdy still can be powerful as long as he is getting those melee crits right on top of a Squishy. Melee crits on a Squishy are the way to mid to find wins is the Trendomir. So we'll see what more they can do. Surdy, again, kind of struggling this game. He had an advantageous matchup and didn't quite fill, fill it just like the last game. It's Illigo. I mean, he should be fine here. The W coming out from Karma is a really good ability, especially when you're going for this, you know, healing style of build. But the rest of the map is going to kind of stall out a little bit. And I feel like both teams are okay with that because the Players that I feel like have agency for Taco Gaming are the right ones. You put it on Trickster, you give it to Cozy, you give it to Doxa as the players who are going to start trying to find all of these flanks. And as this game gets later, we're going to have to pay attention to where Doxa chooses to stand on the map. Is he going to be threatening all these flanks? Is he going to be looking for different angles? Because he was so strong last game that he was able to just kind of go straight in. And for Cozy, I know we... We've slightly, you know, talked about him, but during all the early game 1v1s, I feel like I didn't do enough of a good job of giving him the credit that he's deserved and kind of just underplayed it. It's like, oh, well, that Surdy is taking these 1v1s, you know, and we're just seeing what happens with the flip, right? But Cozy has someone has gone on his own journey through Proving Grounds last year where he didn't get a chance to make an appearance because the amateur team that he was on during the spring was 100 Thieves Next, and it, that roster didn't work out so well, and they swapped him in. Gomsu came in, Chad came in for another uh, player on 100 Thieves Next as well, and then 100 Thieves Next actually made it to Proving Grounds, and so I don't know if that has ever, you know, been in Cozy's minds like, wow, was I one of the people that was underperforming on the roster and with me gone? Has that changed things? But Cozy is coming in with a statement performance so far, both in the Akali in the game too, and now this Gnar that could help be the, the push that Toco, Taco Gaming need to knock Evil Geniuses out of the lower bracket. So now we'll see what Cozy can actually do. He's still on the map trying to farm up for that Trinity Force and Taco Gaming, they want to make sure that they can get their waves pushed out before this upcoming dragon. They want to be able to take uh, these fights. They want to be able to get to the dragon first. And again, that's always something that we're expecting from the Academy teams. But Taco Gaming, they're kind of upsetting that. It's been a very fluid setup around a lot of these dragons. And so as this mid game is fully underway, watch where Doxa sets up, watch where Trickster sets up, and see how close Skytech is staying on top of everybody else to make sure that the engage can't do anything. And Evil Genius is still trying to hold on to the control of this game. Next Dragon in 20 seconds, but Taco Gaming once again, meeting them man for man for the most part. Cozy is going to be the last one to the party. Surdy gets himself right into the front line That's of Taco Gale Gaming. Force. Gale Force gone. Watch how they watch with the re-engage now. Devour used for Tomio to protect the Viego so he can look for resets in the fight. But Cozy Ooh, is getting the charm. angry. He's getting the Rage Bar fold up. So Lego gone. There's no Let's go, Cozy! Massive no! For Cozy, finds the back line of Evil Geniuses Academy, and it could be what pushes Taco Gaming to the finish.
finish line. Is this it? A triple kill coming out from Cozy, totally taking control. Once again, Taco Gaming completely upsetting the balance of power between Amateur and Academy. They are looking so strong, and it just comes from the fact that Surdy, unfortunately, not having a great game, but the only person who finds himself alive, he walks into the enemy team draws out so many cooldowns for uh, his own side, and they get both the dragon, and now they should be able to pick up the Baron as well. Rovix comes over, is like, yeah, okay, I'll keep you alive, Trickster, but oh my god, Taco Gaming are in control. And they are a solid 3,000 gold lead ahead as well. We have to take a look at that replay once again. Yeah, I mean, just watch how Doxa and Trickster go into this game, right? They just go right on in, and Doxa... I was asking, is he going to go for a flank? Because last game he was just strong enough to go right on in. This time again, I feel like he goes in the front door, but there's nothing to stop him because the team is on the wrong side of the wall. They can't do anything to help their healer. And when the healer goes down, that's a huge part of your power budget that is completely gone. So Doxa and Trickster isolating Soligo and are able to find a dominant team fight win to set up for Cozy. 5,000 gold now ahead. Taco Gaming with the Baron buff on their side. It may not be game end yet for Evil Geniuses Academy and still time for them to recuperate. But with such a dominant fight that you just with, with, witnessed. <laughs> witnessed. <laughs> it, it's so dominant that I can't just, I can't just speak <laughs> at the moment. Words what? are Ooh. failing me at this point. But for Taco Gaming, you see the confidence that Cozy is leading the charge with. In game two, he and Doxo were definitely hand in hand working in tandem and making such a great job and being such you know, lethal assassins looking for flanks. Okay. Doxa is gonna get routed off by two members here, but Trickster with the reinforcements charges right onto Cowrie. Yeah, Cowrie's gone. Tomio is also on the run as well, but he will be routed off as well thanks to the resets coming in from Doxa. That's two members gone, Josh. And Cozy has already prepped the wave, knocked out the inhibitor tower on the bottom side of the map. Cerny wants to fight back against it, but Cozy, he is a one man army, just forcing the remaining members of Evil Genius's Academy away from defending their inhibitor. I was just about to say, watch how Kauri's going to try and make a play in order to get things started. And they try and do that, but they're so far behind. He doesn't have the gold. They don't have the tools necessary. And Trickster and Doxa winning a 2v2 against Kauri and Tomio. That's what we got to see coming through. And Kauri, I mean, to his credit, he tried to make something happen. He got the root, but the instant reaction from Doxa to use the Zonius to make sure he doesn't get hit up by the stun means that he is totally fine throughout this whole thing. And then with Trickster here, Kauri, he has to try and keep himself alive, but against an Ari and a Hecarim that are this far ahead, there's nothing that he could do. I respect the attempt, but oh my god, Taco Gaming is on a rampage. I'm really trying to find a way and think if, if Evil Genius is Academy. Oh, of options, what they can do. They have and to find it, catches. It, it is all about the picks, right? Yeah. And Evil Geniuses Academy have to wait for the right moment, but the way that Taco Gaming, they cleaned up their play from game one, made great adaptations into game two, and game three, this is by far, it has been their most dominant against yeah. Evil Geniuses. I mean, this is the momentum that we talk about in these series, right? The, you know, the two game series, the best of ones that we've been seeing throughout the rest of the season are not the same. But when you turn things around, you see that Taco Gaming are playing with so much confidence. Ta Doxa Cozy. just Watch stepping Cozy. up. He's just walking up. His Mega Nar is timing out though. So this will give a little bit of reprieve over to Evil Geniuses. No plays can be made unless it's off of the back of Trickster who can go for the Onslaught of Shadows. They're gonna wait it up. Cozy just buying time and being a threat right now. He's in mini nar form. Tracks the attention of Evil Geniuses, but Cerny gets charged and no chance to pull the Undying Rage. That's five on four. Evil Geniuses down a man. Have to pull out everything for this last stand. This is their tournament lifelines on the line against Taco Gaming, but they are the ones about to make an upset in the lower bracket, being the first amateur team to take out an, am an academy team from proving grounds they make the engage and cozy with the mega door sends evil geniuses out of the tournament out of the bracket and sends taco gaming forward in the proving grounds oh my god i can't believe 
I can't believe that Taco Gaming have done it. Cozy Doxa Trickster looking so good throughout this whole series. The second half when they are just able to constantly find individual outplays. And the tragedy for Evil Geniuses, right? We get to see the EGP play immediately after, but you know they're beating themselves up right now. You know that this is the kind of thing where they look back and say, we were the Academy team. We were supposed to be better. Where did we where did we go wrong? And ultimately, it was just Taco Gaming who was the better team today. And this was not the upset I was expecting in the lower bracket mark. This was not who I was expecting to lose. They were my dark horse to make a huge run throughout the lower bracket. And they're gone. What a <laughs> what a finish. And and to Taco Gaming. You know, an overall huge congrats and round of applause. And I, I, we gave Docs a, a lot of praise in game two for the Zed. And, you know, Cozy a little bit of credit. But, dude, Cozy, the redemption arc is so incredible for this man. And w when we talked about it just a little bit, uh, we didn't get a chance to really go into the details of, of Cozy's playing career over the course of the past uh, two years. And Mazel mentioned it, you know, going into uh, in this final game, uh, Cozy had uh, him made his debut on XT Esports back in 2020 fall. And a, a majority of those players had found their way onto the second class of 100 Thieves next. But then that spring roster it just didn't go anywhere. They didn't make it into proving grounds. They were finding a lot of faults and flaws. And uh, it seems like the general perception that, like, you know, Busio and Instinct and Young were still the only people that were performing well enough. And the changes were made to swap out uh, Cozy and Goo to put yeah. in Gomsu and Chad. And for Cozy to endure that and then to see 100 Thieves Next immediately make success and results over the course of time in the summer... Hey, you know, I, I don't know what goes on in a player's mind throughout the entire summer and making those changes, but he kept grinding through. He started playing in collegiate for uh, St. Louis University. He leveled up his play. And in this series, when Taco Gaming needed it most, oh, man, he delivered. And it's not just that he had a good series. He did it while getting counterpicked, right? It was the he blinded the Nara and got a Trindamir. That matchup sucks. He blinded the Akali and played it into Fiora. That matchup also sucks. And he won both of them. He won both the matchups up against Surti. And that is that is very exciting for a player who has been, you know, pretty decent throughout the amateur season thus far. But most of us did not have him going to be as a player that was going to be able to stand up to, especially the upper half top laners coming from the academy side of the bracket. And he he made Surti look like a fool. <laughs> it was not close. Uh, Cozy absolutely had his number every single time that he didn't get level three dived. Taco Gaming, congratulations for keeping yourselves in the lower bracket. And obviously for them, they will now have a greater obstacle ahead of them once they find out who their next matchup will be. But for us, Take we'll be time. taking a short break at, oh, oh damn. <laughs> Okay, well, that, that's another story we'll have to revisit later on in the tournament. But for now, we'll be going to a short break. When we come back, it is Mizell on the interview desk with Cozy. Welcome on back, and I'm here with the post-game interview powered by Verizon. And I'm joined by the one, the only, Taco Gaming's top laner, Cozy. And unfortunately, we don't have a webcam with him, but we do have his picture and some audio. So, Cozy, welcome to the interview. It's Taco Tuesday, baby! <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I like the calm, cool, collected as I hear the excitement, though, biting away behind it. How does it feel to come away from this? I, your journey here, man, all the way from XT Esports, what has that been like for you? I think I've been really improved a lot since uh, XT Esports. I was really bad. I was really bad <laughs> players, but <laughs> I think I met a lot of good players and good coaches, and now here I'm, here I am. I love to hear it, and here you are indeed. I mean, you got to stunt on your Akali in game number two. How did that feel? I felt really good. I, I'm really confident to play Akali any like always, 
So I was really confident to beat their top laner, and I was really confident to win the game when I picked Akali. Yeah, I, you could see it immediately. The confidence was radiating from you. The big question is, though, that game three, going into the NAR versus Trindamir matchup, you had aces up your sleeve or something. Tell me a little bit about that matchup in the third game. Uh, uh, on the drift, we, we had to blind top. So uh, my I used to blind NAR a lot because I like, I like playing NAR. And he's my one of the best champions. So I just picked Nar and and yeah, I just win. <laughs> In Nar, you trust <laughs> it all works out. Uh, we need a Taco Nar skin at this point as well. How does it feel for you playing on two teams at once, as you do play for Taco Gaming and St. Louis University? A bit of differing uh, styles for the two. Uh. Um, I think I'm fine with playing on two teams because, like, I just want to play a lot. Yeah. Like, yeah, <laughs> hey, I just want to play a lot. Time. Yeah. I, I love it. Well, sp uh, circling back to more focus on Taco Gaming in specific, this win today is huge for you guys. What is the key to success for Taco Gaming? What What's the, the engine that runs at the heart of the team? What keeps you guys going? Mm, I think uh, everyone is really close to each other, and I think everyone is key. Like We can play to any side to win. I love it. Hey, got to have the flexibility if you're going to make a run in Proving Ground. Speaking of making the run, you're going on to face Dignitas Academy, a tough tale in its own right. How does it feel going on in the lower bracket? But specifically, do you have any thoughts about Dignitas Academy? I think it's winnable. We can win. All right. Hey, winnable. I love it. Now, the last question I have, and it's got to be a question on everybody's mind. Are you going to go get tacos tonight or what? <laughs> uh, maybe. <laughs> I really like tacos. <laughs> don't, throw, don't throw me the trade secrets, all right? We don't need to know the tacos, all right? It's fine. Uh, thank you so much, Cozy. I do want to actually give you a little last moment to give any shout outs. Anybody you want to talk about before we let you go? Uh, shout out to my teammates and all the staffs in Go Gaming and Coach Shia. And I uh, shout out to <clears throat> Man Dumpling. Thank you. Thank you so much, Cozy. It's an absolute pleasure to have gotten to talk to you and keep up the run. I love to see it, man. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.